So what's going on guys? This is an episode of DIY Dan Mechanical and we're going to be flipping the axles on my three axle toy hauler. During this process I also found some worn out bushings and shackles which I had to replace as well. I will also be going over how the electric brakes work and adjusting the wheel bearings as well. So let's get to it. So the first thing I did was get it up on jack stands on both sides of the trailer. Uh, these were some nice big jack stands I borrowed. You want to make sure that you have this thing well supported because you will be smacking stuff around with a hammer trying to get the leaf springs out and the bolts from the brackets out. I put my jack stands right behind the leaf spring brackets on the main frame. Usually I left the jack under the side I was working on while I was working on it too. I can't emphasize how critical it is to make sure this trailer is well supported before starting this project. Then I went ahead and unbolted all the tires and wheels and removed them. So I've got jack stands under the front two axles on both sides. Now I'm going to jack up this third axle a little bit to take the pressure off of the leaf springs. And when I jack this up, it'll actually set this axle down on the jack stand. You always want to loosen the nut side of these and hold the bolt side because usually these are knurled so they don't spin. I used a penetrating lubricant to help the nuts come off the rusted bolts a little easier. Using a wrench I held the bolt and loosened the nuts with my impact. Bear in mind I had the axles supported with jack stands on both sides of both of the axles and my jack was holding the third axle. I went ahead and took all the bolts and nuts off all three axles both sides. This is a good sign that this came right off but you want to just these bolts should come right off like that. If there's any kind of tension on that, where it's having a hard time pushing out, you need to readdress the way you have your jack stands. Move something around so you know you're supported correctly. You don't want something pushing out and then it twisting on you, falling, pinching yourself. Another thing is you never want to reach inside when you're taking stuff like this off. So I'm using a punch to push it out the final way just in case something does shift, my hands not inside or underneath it. Same story over here. Okay, and then we'll give these a little, we're supported good there. This one has still got leverage on it from being bolted up front. All right, the neural is holding this one pretty good, so we gotta give it a pretty good whack. So we wanna stay out of the way, just in case, again, something shifts. We do have it on jack stands, so there shouldn't be any danger here, but you never know. So we wanna stay clear. Pop that one loose. Your electric brake wires are usually going to be on the driver's side, so you will need to cut the two wires coming from the frame down to your axles before pulling the axles down off the stands and pulling them out from underneath the trailer. Once everything's out, it's a good time to look at all your suspension parts to make sure you don't need any bushings or pieces. Take a good look at your shackles. That one's worn out. See the oblongness of the hole. The bushing got completely worn out on the center pivot and actually wore out the bracket itself, so I'll have to get a new one of those. There's that knurl I was telling you about. The knurl is completely worn off of this one. Probably because somebody spun it, tightening it down. I am using some uh, anti-seize in my bushings here, so hopefully they last a little longer. They do make a greasable bolt, however these were less than a dollar a piece. The greasable bolts were almost five dollars a piece. So on this trailer leaf spring suspension you want to tighten these bolts down as tight as you can go and then back them off basically one turn or until the leaf spring or the center pivot free floats. They are lock nuts, so they will not loosen any more from where you put them at. So now I'm replacing the bushings and the leaf springs. They are just plastic, so usually you can just use the new one to push the old one out. If they are being kind of a pain, you can use a socket and an extension and lightly tap them out and then push the new bushing in. I went ahead and put anti-seize in all those bushings as well. Now I'm putting the leaf springs up into place. It may be necessary to tap them with a hammer. 
to line up the bolt. Once getting that bolt started, then you can go ahead and grab a shackle and two other bolts. I usually put the bolts on the inside of the frame to make it easier to tighten the nut down on the outside. Then just repeated this process for all three axles on both sides. Once again, when you tighten all your suspension parts down, you're gonna take them all the way tight, making sure the knurl of the bolt is flush with the shackle or the spring hanger. Then backing it off about a turn or until the suspension parts free float, as you can see here. I did this for each bolt all the way around on every axle. I back the nuts off a little bit, then try and move the suspension. If it was still tight, I would back it off a little bit more until everything free floated on the suspension. I've seen these be left too tight and all it's gonna do is not give you as good a suspension and it will also wear out all the suspension parts faster. Also, remember to check your jack stands and make sure they are nice and secure and not leaning at all during this process. And once again, I also put my jack under the same side of the frame that I was working on, just as extra precaution as well. After tightening all the suspension down on both sides, I went ahead and tried to get my shackles all in the right position. So usually you can do this by hand. However, depending on the trailer, they might not stay in that position until you have the tires and wheels on as well. So the other option, if you don't want to tighten them down, which I could have done too, I just chose not to, is get you a piece of pipe that the bolt will go into. And you can set your shackle on there like so, and then tap it in like so. You want to make sure that your bolt is pulled all the way tight into the shackle. The other way is just to do it in a vise. If you have a vise, you can collapse the vise down stick it in there and tap it down there as well. Truth be told, it would have been easier for me to pound the bolts into the shackles beforehand as well. However, I would especially recommend it if you do not have an impact. So this is the only difficult part to this process. If you do not have a welder, you can always just take your axles down to a fab shop and have them weld the saddles on for you. What I'm doing right now is cutting the electric brake wires and running a piece of tie wire through the axle because obviously as you weld the saddle that steel is going to get very hot and there's a good chance it will melt your insulation on your wiring. So I just used an electrical butt connector to attach some tie wire to my electric brake wires then pulled the tie wire through the axle. So now I'm just taking a grinder and grinding down the metal where I'm going to weld the new saddles on the axle. Uh, the saddles are about the cheapest part of this project, so it's not really worth trying to cut the old ones off and moving them. It's just easier to buy some new saddles and welding them on. So as far as figuring out where to weld the new saddles, I took the axle and put it on jack stands, put a level underneath the original saddle, made sure it was perfectly level, then set the saddle on the top and put the level on top of that and made sure it was level as well. Basically, you want to be 180 degrees off from where the original saddle is. If you do take it to a fab shop, they might want you to pull the backing plate and the drum and brakes off. I just took my time and made sure it did not get that hot. I welded all six saddles on the axles and then went ahead and slid the axles back up into place. So I was actually able to just do these by hand and lift them into place. I did stick some wood under the drums and then went ahead and started my U-bolts. And when you're installing the axles, you need to make sure you line that nut up with the hole in the saddle, and that is all you need to worry about before tightening down the U-bolts. It's not uncommon to have to shift the axle or, or smack the leaf spring with a hammer to line up the nut on the leaf spring to get it in the saddle. So I was only able to get the nut started on the one side U-bolt. So I put the nuts on, tightened it down a little bit, then removed the nuts and put the lock washers and then the nut back on and tightened it up. Then slowly tighten down your U-bolts until you make sure 
that that nut from the leaf spring is down in the saddle correctly before tightening the U-bolts down the rest of the way. So when I go to tighten these down, I like to pry it in like so. If you saw that, I pried against the backing plate a little bit, and then I'm gonna snug it down to hold it there. Then it should hold there while you finish tightening it down. On the inside U-bolt, sometimes they'll come out to the side here too. Sometimes I'll take a hammer and hammer that one over before I tighten it down as well. You want to make sure your U-bolts are nice and straight because if they're kicked out to the side and you can snug them down like that, but then if the axle shifts, you're going to have loose U-bolts. I did go around all of my U-bolts one more time to make sure they were all tight. So I'm starting to put the tires and wheels on after tightening all the U-bolts down. However, I was worried about rocks getting in on the brake shoes since I had to drag them through the gravel. So we're going to go ahead and pull the drums off and check the wheel bearing adjustment. A large pair of channel locks works the best to get the grease cap off. If not, a hammer and a screwdriver will do. Now, depending on your trailer or axle, it might have a cotter pin or it might have a, a spring-loaded cap that goes over the nut. Here, regardless, you're going to have a device that locks the nut from being able to walk off. The best tool to use to take this cotter pin out is a pair of dikes. You can leverage it against the outer housing of the hub. Now these should not be any more than hand tight for your adjustment. And then you want to cradle the wheel bearing so as you pull the drum off, you can catch the wheel bearing and the washer. There was a couple rocks and debris in the drums from pulling the axles through the gravel. So went ahead and cleaned that all out. It's a good time to look at your drums, make sure there's no bad grooves in your drums, and that goes for the side where the magnet rides and the shoes ride. So my shoes were almost in brand new condition. The guy that had it before me must have just done them before he sold it. You always wanna look at your shoes when you have the drums off to make sure they're not heat checked. They will be cracks, and that's usually from somebody having the gain up too high on your trailer brake controller. Also on electric brakes, there is always a left hand and a right hand brake assembly. You want to look at your bracket that holds your magnet. The bracket should always be curving around the front of the axle. If it is curved around the back of the axle, it is incorrectly put on. And what happens is, once you step on the brakes, there's a, anywhere from a you know, 0 to 12 volt reference that goes to this magnet, and the magnet adheres to the inside of the drum and it pulls, and that's what applies your brakes, like so. And then your trailer gain on your brake controller, the plus or minus, that just gives how much voltage, either a greater voltage or a less voltage, and that's how much braking power you have right here on the magnet. So anyways, everything looks brand new. We're gonna just pop it back on there. You would wanna probably take the seal out and check the inner bearing as well, but like I said, everything's pretty much brand new on this, so I'm just, cleaning the dirt and debris out of it and readjusting the bearings. So I slid the drum back over the brake shoes. Now this does have a grease cert on it, but for some reason they, this grease cert comes out between the, the inner seal and the inner wheel bearing, which is kind of a stupid place. I'm gonna just pump some more grease in between my two bearings. This is probably not necessary, but it's just something I do. After filling my hub up with grease, I went ahead and put the bearing and the washer back into place and tighten the nut down by hand. You can see the grease pushing out from the outside of the wheel bearing, and that's just what I want to see when I tighten the nut down. Now, as far as adjusting your wheel bearings, what you want to do is take this all the way tight to start, to seat your wheel bearings. So as tight as you can go, and just with a pair of channel locks, ain't gonna be nothing crazy. You want to rotate this a couple times. Once again, you can see the grease pushing out, forcing its way through the bearings as I turn it. Make sure you're still tight, then you wanna back it off a turn. So it's basically hand loose, so you move it by hand. And then barely hand tight. I'm gonna throw the tire and wheel back on just because it is not necessary to take them off if you're just checking your wheel bearing adjustment and show you how to check it with the tire and wheel on the trailer. Always tighten your lug nuts down in a star pattern. Then I always go over them one more time just to make sure they're all tight. On any trailer wheel bearing, 
you want to hear this little, you want to feel this little bit of playing. It's hard to explain, but just that little bit of a tink tink, little, little, that right there. Now I'm going to take it back a little bit to show you what obviously is too much and then I'll tighten it up to show you what is too much. So let's go back here a little bit. Now that's too much. And you can feel it, hear the difference. You can actually see the play and the bearing on that one. So that's way too much. Now we'll go to the other extreme real quick just to show you. So now I tightened it down too much. Now I don't have any any kind of a tink tink. Okay? And that's just too much. Since I pretty much seated the bearings again, I'm going to go back one full turn. And basically it's just barely hand tight. And even that, even that was hand tight and that was just a little bit too much. So just a little bit back. So we've got that little bit of a tink tink. I don't know how else to describe it. And then once you have that, you want to check and see where your cutter pin is or your locking device. And I'm right there, so I think that's going to be good. Mm. See, now here's a good example. When I went to put that cutter pin in, it actually tightened it up. So now I don't have my tink tank. So we're going to take that back out. I'm going to go to the next loosest one. Too tight of a wheel bearing and you're gonna end up seizing up a bearing. A little on the loose side is not gonna hurt it. Always better to be just a tiny bit loose than too tight. So now we make sure that's going through. I'm gonna check it one more time. And we got a tink tink. So that's perfect. Then take a pair of dykes and fold the cotter pin over so it will not back out of the nut. We're gonna check it one more time before we put our bearing cap on. A little bit of a tink tink and we're good to go. And then I just take your cap. And I've seen this before too, don't fill your caps up with grease. All that's gonna cause, you're, you're not, putting bearing grease in there is gonna do you absolutely nothing. It's not gonna to get to your bearings. And a lot of times that grease will get in here and then you got the, all this weight on the cap and it'll end up throwing your grease cap off. Give it a spin. You're gonna hear that little bit of brake drag, no big deal, just make sure you don't have anything really, really aggressively grinding or anything popping when you put that on there and once you spin it. So we're jacking the last axle up. That shackle's coming up on top just like it should be. I went ahead and threw the last tire on. Okay guys, so now all we got left is to hook up the electric brakes. Now you'll notice you got two wires coming from the right side brakes. You got the two wires on your left hand brake right here. And we need one of each to go to one and the other one of each to go to the other wire. You got a, you got a ground and a power here. So you need a ground to each brake and a power to each brake. It does not matter which way you go this way. As long as you've got one of each going to each brake, you're good. Okay, so we're gonna strip these back a little bit. You'll notice this has got a sheathing on it. Make sure you get all the way down to the wire like that. I like to twist them together. And then I'm putting some heat shrink over my wires here. And if it's a real skinny wire, I'll actually strip it back twice as far and fold it over just so I have more strength in where I crimp it. Did I get crimp? I use my butane torch to heat up the heat shrink. You could also use a cigarette lighter. Then repeated that process for the other set of wires and then did the other two axles after that. So I like to remove my hubcaps and I'm going to tell you why. I know it looks better with them on it. However, when I'm pulling this trailer and I stop to get fuel, I like to get out and very quickly touch each one of my hubs and make sure I do not have one hub getting a lot hotter than the rest. That way, if I do feel that, I know I've got a wheel bearing problem starting to develop and I might be able to take care of it before I see a tire and wheel go flying down the freeway.
So hopefully this video helped you out, guys. If you enjoyed it, hit like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you have any other questions involving anything we covered in this video and want a little bit more detail, let me know in comments. And hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.